Right, in this video we're going to demonstrate to you some of the benefits of using Microsoft OneNote. Now, you will have had some training in the last few days on the use of Microsoft Teams and OneNote is part of Microsoft Teams. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can access Microsoft OneNote from Microsoft Teams. So I'm just going to open the Microsoft Teams app on my desktop here and you will notice that it's likely to open up in this sort of screen here where it lists all the teams that you might be a member of. So as you can see I've got quite a lot um, varying from the coding club to um, tutors in the green that I set up for everybody. Your teams are going to be labelled SS for Sherborne School 2019 and then the name of your class. So for instance, um, this would be my upper sixth class and then these are my year three classes um, along here. Now I'm going to show you um, the contents of my A-level computer science class, which doesn't have this naming nomenclature. Um, reason being is I created this before these were made available to us uh, via a trial. So I'm going to open this class here. So let's open this one. It's got the same structure really as the ones that you've got. So you're not going to notice any difference. Um, so what are the things that you can see? Well, you can see in here the name of the class that you're in. And if you click on these three dots here, you can do a few bits and pieces in here about managing your team, adding channels and members etc. Now I'm not going to deal with that because ICT will have dealt with the important aspects of that for you. Instead I'm going to concentrate on what's going on along this bar across the top here. So first of all posts, this is where you can um, generally just write something that all of the members of the team, in other words your students and your fellow teachers in the, in the team, will be able to see. Um, and as you can see, there's been a couple of test messages here from uh, various members of my team, some of which probably are more derogatory than others, typically typical student messages. And the next one will be files. And files, again, is something that the ICT department is going to talk to you about. They will have populated the files area in Teams for you so that you can access those from information that you may have given them or that they have taken off other resources that, that are lying around. I'm going to concentrate more on the class notebook and the assignments um, tabs here. So let's click on class notebook to start with. So what do we mean by class notebook? Well, this is a, a way of storing materials that students can see or add to or teachers can see and add to that are collected in like a book, a notebook, hence class notebook. And it is centered around the members in the team with a differentiation between who are teachers and who are students. When we click on that, we notice that this is the sort of the main uh, front page of uh, Teams. It's a bit of standard information that actually is provided directly from Microsoft here. And you'll notice that there's a little arrow here, this open navigation panel. And if I open that, what you'll see here on the left hand side is a bunch of tabs that you can add to. So these are called sections and I can add a new section in here if I want to and give the section a new name. I won't do that now. But basically what I use these for are all of the topics that the boys are studying. So I've got one on assembly programming, I've got one on other types of programming, flowcharts, object-oriented programming, stacks and queues, etc, etc. And amongst each one of those sections, or topics if you like, are a collection of pages. Um, and the pages are viewable by the students in read-only mode. So anything that you put or populate in here, whether they're existing sections or new sections, are basically read-only information for you to create your notes and send out other information to students. They're able to read that but not change it. Another area of interest is the collaboration space. 
And in the collaboration space, both you as a teacher and the boys have the ability to modify the contents in there. So for example, in my A-level set, I have a glossary. And in that glossary, we have separated our glossary into different topics. And the boys are able to modify the contents in here um, so that they're in charge of the glossary in my course. So I can, uh, they can see here that they've added various bits and pieces in here about the glossary, about different topics. That's always going to be available to them and they can modify that. The other area of interest is where you have what's called the content library. Now I use the content library, as you can imagine, for things that I give out as handouts. So for example, if I have a particular uh, set of block test solutions, so here I've got a February 2020 block test uh, solutions document, um, and I store it in here. Okay, it's taking a little while to um, get going here. So that's what, what I store in the content library. Handouts, solutions, and things like that. Things that are content that aren't necessarily rated, related directly to the notes, but other related uh, items. As well as the content area, there is also a teacher only area. This is useful for me placing solutions to block tests in advance so that I can publish them later and make them available to students without them seeing it. So teacher only obviously means that only the teacher can see that content. Then I have a list of the students that are in my class. And for each of my students, so for example, if I go into uh, Marius here, he has some areas, class notes, hall, handouts and quizzes. And these are basically the same for each student. So they will all have access to this. And hall is, for example, where I ask them to submit their hall and I mark it online. So if I click on hall, you will see that, for example, um, they've done some assembly programming in here and I mark this online. Now, of course, you might not have the facility to do that, but if you do, then you can do that. Otherwise, you could collect your hall this way electronically, or you can do it via email, of course, but I store it in here. Now, um, another part of what the student has are class notes. So if you want the students to create some class notes during a lesson, they can do so in here. And of course, they you can see those and the, the individual students can see those. So each student sees their own selection here, but one student can't see what's going on inside another student's personal folder. I'll talk a little bit more about this when I start talking about the OneNote app. One thing that you'll notice here is everything is just a little bit cramped. It doesn't look particularly well, and you'll notice that it's a little slow. Um, that's because this is a web application, and it's not necessarily storing things locally, and therefore it does act a little slow at times. Um, and to overcome that, what you can do is to open up OneNote in an application, in the native OneNote application. And to further complicate that, there are two versions. If I, the, the easiest thing to get students to do, and they seem to have trouble even remembering this sometimes, is to click on the Start button, and then you will see the OneNote app here. And this is the native Windows 10 OneNote application. So let's do that. And when we do that, we get an application that looks like this. So I'll just maximize that. Again, I have access to all my different notes in here. Now, one thing that a lot of students will have difficulty with is initially seeing their notes there. But you'll notice that there is a link at the bottom that says More Notebooks. If they click on More Notebooks, it should list all of the notebooks that they have access to, including all of their different courses that have been set up by ICT services. So they might open the particular notebook that they're interested in, let's say a physics set three notebook or whatever. 
Now, in my case, we were looking previously at my A-level computer science notebook, and you will see immediately this is a lot more responsive because it is actually storing things on my computer, but synchronizing all the data to the cloud. So I could go to another computer and access it. Initially, it wouldn't be so fast. It would act a little bit like the browser, but when I see things, it stores it locally and um, in, a, in a secure way, of course, and it will become faster at the more that you use it locally. If I want to add a new section in here, I do the same sort of thing, add a new section. So let's say I was going to be teaching something about networks, create a new section, and then I add my different pages into here. And notice it dates them automatically. And in here, I would give a header to each of the, each of the pages. If you want to delete one of the pages, I can right click and delete the page. And I have full access over reading and writing this information. Again, the students do not have access to delete or change any of the content because it sits within this main part of the topics that are available. Let's say I want to uh, add a new page and I want to um, import a document into here. So what I can do in here is I can click on the content area here and I can say insert and I can say a, either a printout or a file. If I click file, it attaches the file a little bit like it attaches a file in email. I do that to start with and let's pick a particular file. So let's go to my downloads folder. I've got a previous um, file that I've um, uploaded here. And I can do insert as an attachment, in which case there's the attachment. If I want to uh, show that information rather than as an attachment, but as a, an actual, uh, like a printout, but on the screen, I can insert the, the printout of the same document. And this time it converts it to a PDF in the background, converts it to basically images, and then I have access to the document immediately. And if I go away and back, it's still that information. So here is a mark scheme, for example, for some questions that I was asking my boys to do in my last lesson. And obviously I would title that appropriately. So I'd call this uh, mark scheme or whatever, whatever it was. They have access to that document so that they can um, use it if they want to um, as a Word document, or they can use it natively within OneNote. It's up to them and up to you, potentially. Now, as I've said before, this content that we've got in here is read-only. So let's say I could add another page in here and I'm going to insert some new content. So let's say, let's take this. 12 in here and you will see that this is actually some questions from a past paper that we did in that same lesson these are the mark scheme so let's change the order of these by dragging this down and I can make this a sub page so people can see that this is, these are the questions and these are the mark schemes so it's a really nice way of organizing past papers and their mark schemes so this is questions on whatever the topic was actually encryption So that becomes available to the students. Now, as I said, this, however, is read-only. If a student wants to type in here, they can't. I can, because I'm a teacher, but the, the student cannot. Um, so we can give them the ability to do that by distributing this information to the students. Now, you'll notice here that I've got this class notebook tab up here class notebook. So if I click on that, you will see various elements to how to manage various bits and pieces in our class notebook. So for, for instance, I could copy the content to the content library. If I consider that to actually be something that I want in the content library, I can do that. Um, there's various other things that I can do in here, the, the more advanced things that relate to creating assignments and being able to mark things online. We'll deal with that in a different video. But let's say I want to distribute this networks to 
um, all of my students. And this is one reason why I've chosen my A-level class, because I'm going to do this and I have to delete them manually. So I didn't want to have to do it with too many students. So I'm going to distribute a new section. OK, so if I distribute a new section here, I can call that new section, let's say, Networks. And I click Distribute. And it distributes a read and write version of that new section, it says distributed now, to all of the students. So if I go around down to uh, some of the students, you should see in a second, once this is updated, there's my new section there. Can you see? In Sam Hartley's area. Oh no, that's a, something that he's done. So you'll notice that it hasn't appeared straight away. Now, if it doesn't appear straight away, you have to get used to, and the students have to be able to do this, in synchronizing the contents. Now, to do that, we go up to this area where it says the name of the class. We right click, say synchronize, and then we can synchronize this notebook. OK, so we do that. And you can see this little icon, sort of a, um, a refresh sort of symbol here. And if we wait a little while after it's done that, everybody, I will be able to see everybody's um, new section that I just created in there. There it is. It's just appeared. Networks. There it is in Hercules' personal page. Now, there's nothing in there at the moment. So let's say I want to actually distribute these questions, just this page here. I can select the page with the questions that I want the boys to do. And I can say distribute page. I click distribute page. And I select the networks tab in their personal folders that I want to distribute it to. Click distribute. And it will go ahead and distribute a read write copy of this particular exercise that I want them to do in their networks um, personal area so that they will have right access to it and they can fill this in electronically if they want to. I know there's quite a few bits and pieces there, but it's worth noting that being able to distribute content like that really easily is really, really powerful. And, and the most important thing is it, it automatically sorts out all the boys' notes. I know that my notes are available to all the boys here. And they've always got access to them, which is which is fabulous. Um, when we worry about boys having a decent set of notes to revise from, I know for a fact that they will have. I hope that's useful so far, and we'll do some more of these bits in a different video.